constitute a recommendation by Recognia to buy, sell, or hold any stock option or securities. <coughs> So to begin, who's Recognia? So we are in the business of providing what's called actionable investment research for self-directed investors and traders. We help to automate the investment decision-making process, thereby making it easier for you to find more trade ideas and to cover more ground than you'd be able to on your own. We present our tools as part of a guided and interpreted experience, recognizing that every trader is also a student. We've been at this for over 10 years, and we've won numerous awards for our products. So with that behind us, let's talk a little bit about technical insight. So the goal of technical insight is to automate the established practices of technical analysis and chart pattern recognition. So what we're not promising you is a crystal ball that can predict the stock market with 100% certainty, but rather we're going to basically scan the markets for you and find the technical events, the patterns that technical analysts would look for and that they would use in their trading. <clears throat> And whereas a, a human technical analyst could look at 20 or 30 or maybe 50 charts in a day, we're going to scan every single stock in the market every day and basically give you all the technical events that are interesting to you. Now, by doing this, we're going to basically allow you to uncover new opportunities to find things that might be interesting trade ideas that you wouldn't find on your own. We can help you to understand what the price action is telling you on a particular security and, of course, manage your risk by tuning in to signs of strength and weakness. Now, some of you may already be using technical analysis in your trading, but if you're not, um, there's some reasons why you might want to think about doing that. So what is technical analysis? <clears throat> so at its core, technical analysis is really looking for patterns and relationships in the price and volume history of stocks. And these patterns can help, help us identify the attitudes of buyers and sellers. So if we think about every trade that takes place on an exchange, that represents an agreement between a buyer and a seller for what is the fair price of security at that particular point in time. Um, so by understanding the changing balance of supply and demand through the prices we get from the stock exchanges, that can tell us a lot about the sentiment towards an individual stock. <clears throat> so let's move on and talk about the kinds of technical events, the kinds of occurrences in technical analysis that a, a technical trader would want to know about. And there are really three classes of events that are commonly used. There are what are called the short-term patterns to begin with. These are patterns that are based on the shape and relationship of candlesticks or price bars. So I'll give you an example. This is a short-term pattern called a hammer. So you can see we've actually had a long decline coming into this particular pattern. And here outlined in purple, I have the short-term pattern called a hammer. So you can see it actually looks like a hammer. There's actually a hammer head at the top and a long, long tail. And what this particular pattern tells us is that the, the sentiment for the particular, this particular stock has changed on this day. So you can see that the stock actually opened near the highs of the day. It traded way, way down during the course of the day, and then it closed again near the highs. So what does that say about the sentiment of the stock in the market? Well, we came into this particular trading day after a long, long decline, so the bears are expecting more of the same. The stock opens near its highs, starts immediately to trade much lower. The bears are thinking, okay, the stock is going lower for the day. But something happens during the day, which actually causes the price to rally, and we actually close again near the highs. So something significant has happened in terms of the sentiment of buyers and sellers towards this particular security, which has caused this pattern to form. So a hammer is a reversal pattern indicating a change of sentiment. Now, of course, when you're actually trading these patterns, you don't have the benefit of knowing what actually happens next. So you're going to see basically a long decline followed by a hammer. So you're going to have to have you know, the confidence to say, okay, I'm going to either go long on this particular security or I'm going to watch it very, very closely and just make sure the hammer is confirmed before I actually take my position. Now, here's another example. This is another short-term pattern called the shooting star. And I've showed two examples on this particular chart. So the shooting star is the opposite of the hammer. Whereas the hammer is a bullish reversal pattern, the shooting star is a bearish reversal. So what we're showing here is uh, one particular hammer we have here. It's basically got a long tail with a very small head at the end. And you can see that the a shooting star can have either a, um, a white real body or a black one. It doesn't make a difference. This is probably the better example of the shooting star on the right-hand side. So here we've had a long increase in the price of the shares. This particular day, the stock opened near the lows of the day rallied uh, much, much higher, but then closed again near the lows. So for the same reason that a hammer was bullish, a shooting star is a bearish reversal pattern. 
Now, another class of technical events which are very interesting are the indicators and oscillators. And when most people think about technical analysis, what they tend to think about is the indicators and oscillators. Um, the reason why that, is, that occurs is not, not because these particular events are more predictive than other kinds of technical events, but they're used more because historically they've been very easy to calculate. And I'll show you some of the reasons why. So there are really three kinds of indicators and oscillators that are commonly used in technical analysis. They're what are called the trend-following indicators. These are typically moving averages, and their purpose is to smooth the price so the trends can be easily seen. There are oscillators that are called momentum oscillators, and they're intended to measure the speed or direction of price changes of the stock. So two common ones you've heard of are the relative strength index and the rate of change oscillator. And then there are what are called stochastics, where we're looking at the position of the close relative to the recent highs and lows. And we use that to tell us something about the sentiment of the stock and how that sentiment is changing. So two examples here would be the fast and slow stochastics. So let's look at a few examples of indicators and oscillators that you can use in your trading. So let's begin with the moving averages. Again, I mentioned these are very, very commonly used, and the reason they're so commonly used is that historically they were easy to calculate. So back in the days before computers, it was really easy to figure out how, what a moving average for the day was. If you want to figure out the 50-day simple moving average, all you have to do is take the closing price over the last 50 days, add it up, divide by 50, and that's today's value of the 50-day SMA. Tomorrow, you just throw out the oldest day, add the newest day in, divide by 50, and that's tomorrow's value. So moving averages were very, very easy to calculate in the days before computers, and as they've even carried on to become um, you know, popular even today. There are many variations of the moving average, so there's an exponential moving average, a weighted moving average, the adaptive moving average, and so on. So many different moving averages for different kinds of trading conditions. Now, what's important to know here is moving averages work best in trending markets. If you have a market that's moving sort of sideways, you tend to get a lot of reversals or a lot of crossings in the moving average, and it tends not to be as good a trading signal as when the markets are trending. Something else that's interesting about moving averages is the time frames are relative. So you'll hear the 200-day moving average used very frequently, and that originated because it used to be used to analyze the silver market. And the reason it was used in the silver market was because Kodak used to keep a 200-day inventory of silver. Um, today, the four-month moving average is used for some commodities because it used to be used for soybeans because that was the shelf life of margarine. So a lot of these things have historical reasons why they tended to be of whatever time frame they were. So let's just take a look at some examples here. So here's a particular chart. This is the chart for Hewlett-Packard. And I've drawn on here two different moving averages. We have the 200-day simple moving average drawn in red. And in blue, we have the 50-day simple moving average. And what I wanted to show you was how these two different moving averages can help you in your trading. So let's look first at the 200-day SMA. So what we find here is that this particular moving average happens to form a very, very nice resistance level for the price of the stock. So you see we actually approach or touch that line many times, but don't actually break through it. So if we were to actually go you know, past the far right edge of the chart and we found the price rallying again back towards the 200-day SMA, it might be reasonable to expect that the price might bounce off it rather than breaking through it. Now, if the price did break through it, that would indicate perhaps a change in sentiment and that would actually be a bullish event. Now, the 50-day SMA is out. technical analysts might use simple moving averages as part of their trading. <clears throat> but the bulk of this presentation I'd like to be on classic patterns. Um, these are distinct price swings forming on the shape of a price chart. You know, classic patterns are uh, fairly well known, but perhaps not as well known as the short-term patterns and the indicators and oscillators. 
So one of the better known classic patterns is the head and shoulders bottom. This is probably one of the two uh, classic patterns most people have heard of. So what defines a head and shoulders bottom is we have to have a decline coming into this particular event. This is a reversal pattern, so there has to be something to reverse. And you see we have a pattern which looks like the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder of a person, but of course flipped upside down. Um, that basically is showing us that the trend is about to change. Um, this upper trend line here was a, was a line of resistance to the price of the stock, and this lower trend line was a level of support. But now we've actually come into a pattern where the level of resistance has changed. This horizontal neckline now becomes the level of resistance. You see we actually approach or touch it several times before breaking through. That point where we break through is called the confirmation price. Um, this is not a head and shoulders bottom, nor is it useful at all for technical analysis until we actually break through that neckline. The neckline indicates a level of resistance has been broached, and therefore this becomes a bullish signal. Now something else that's interesting about classic patterns is that we can use them to get a sense of where the price might be going and how long it might take to get there. So the way technical analysts do that is they will measure what's called the height of the pattern. So this purple line here is the height measured from the neckline to the lowest point of the head. And if we take that height and add it to the confirmation price, that gives us a sense of about how high we expect the price to move, in other words, the target price. We can also get a sense of how long it will take to achieve the target price by measuring the length of the pattern. So we're from the point where we cross the neckline in the downward direction to the point where we cross the neckline in the upward direction, that defines the length of the pattern. And if we add that length to the confirmation date, that gives us kind of a rough rule of thumb for about how long we think it might take to reach the target price. So this is very actionable because it tells us what might happen and how long it might take to get there. So that's the head and shoulders bottom, which is one very, very uh, well-known classic pattern, but there's many, many others. And I'll go through quickly a number of the other classic patterns that are often used in technical analysis. Triple tops and bottoms are another important pattern. And I've shown an example here, but you can see that we've had a long decline. We have then three successive uh, lows with a neckline indicating a new level of resistance to the price of the stock. So triple tops and bottoms are always reversal patterns. We're reversing a trend um, from either the downtrend to the uptrend or vice versa. Um, it's also important in many of these patterns to look for some volume at the confirmation. If we find at the confirmation the volume is very, very light, that would be a sign that perhaps the pattern is not as, as valid as it might be. A simpler version of the triple top or bottom is the double top or bottom. So again, we've um, come into this following a decline. We have two successive lows with a new level of resistance. Breaking through the top of that neckline indicates a bullish event, and oftentimes the stock will go on to rally. Again, double tops and bottoms are reversal events. Triangles are very, very commonly traded by technical traders, and there are actually many different variations of triangles. What a triangle basically shows you, though, is that there's a dynamic level of resistance, which is the top uh, slanted line of the triangle, and a dynamic level of support, which is the bottom line. And those levels of support and resistance are converging towards an apex. So if you think about that, that is clearly an unstable situation. You can't have um, the high and the low um, converging at each other like that forever. At some point, something has to happen. It either needs to break out above or break out below. So typically at roughly two-thirds to three-quarters of the distance to the apex, the price is going to break out one way or the other. Now there are many different kinds of triangles that you can trade in different ways. So some triangles are reversal patterns, that's the top and bottom triangle, and the rest are continuation patterns. So we have the ascending continuation triangle and the symmetrical continuation triangle. This one here I've shown is symmetrical, sorry, is ascending, because the lower uh, trend line here is more or less horizontal. If that was slanted and it was more um, slanted upwards, that would be a, a symmetrical continuation triangle. Wedges are very similar to triangles. They're always continuation patterns. The difference between a triangle and a wedge is that in a, in a wedge, the apex of the wedge is actually pointed down somewhat. So the triangle would have this lower um, trend line being horizontal or perhaps sloping upwards. If it's slanting downwards, it becomes a wedge. But it's very, very similar. You have these converging lines of support and resistance indicating an unstable situation. We're going to break out either upward or downward from the wedge. 
Flags and pennants are another very, very well used uh, technical event by technical traders. And I actually find in my trading these are quite useful. So a flag is formed when we have a very steep run up in the price of a stock followed by a horizontal um, consolidation period. So that steep run up you'll see outlined here in the gray trend lines, that's called the, the flagpole. And then the, the consolidation period is called the flag pattern. So the flag is typically uh, formed by horizontal onto lines of support and resistance, although they may actually slightly converge as they do in this case. If they converge a lot, then they actually become a pennant. So what often happens is that this flag will indicate a consolidation period after which the price of the security will resume that very steep upward trend, and that's what actually happened in this particular case. Another pattern which is used is upside and downside breakouts. So you may look at this and say, well, gee, this looks exactly like a double bottom. Look at that. It's like a W shape, just like the W double bottom. But the difference is, rather than being a reversal pattern like the double bottom, upside and downside breakouts are consolidation, or sorry, are continuation patterns. So here we've actually gone into this on an upward trend, and we've broken out above the upward resistance level. So this is actually a consolidation period, indicating a resumption of the previous trend. Um, so this is actually also very useful for trading in, tr in trending markets. This is an example of the megaphone bottom pattern. Megaphones are always reversal patterns, and something's called the broadening pattern. But essentially here, here again, you have the line of uh, resistance on the top, in this case sloping up, and a line of support on the bottom, in this case sloping down. So unlike the triangle where these are converging, in this case they are diverging. So again, this is an unstable situation. It indicates a market that's out of control. There's a diverging set of uh, sentiment between buyers and sellers. At some point, one of those two groups is going to win out, and a new trend is going to be established, either upward or downward. And a diamond is also a very common pattern. Um, diamonds are really kind of the combination of a triangle and a megaphone. So you basically have a broadening pattern at the outset of the diamond. That's like a megaphone. And then something happens to the sentiment towards that stock, and support and resistance starts to con converge. And again, we have an unstable situation. We'll either break out above or below the trend line of the diamond to confirm a new pattern. So diamonds come in, in four kinds. There's diamond tops and diamond bottoms, which are reversal patterns. And there's bullish and bearish continuation diamonds as well. And diamonds actually are one of the more common patterns, believe it or not. Um, they tend to occur quite, quite frequently on the prices of instruments. And then an interesting case is what's called the rounded top or bottom. <clears throat> so this indicates rather than a sudden change in sentiment, a very gradual change in sentiment. So in this particular event, this is a, a rounded bottom. So we had a trend line coming into this, a fairly steep down trend. And slowly over a number of weeks, the sentiment towards this particular stock has changed, and we now uh, in, go into a, uh, an uptrend. <clears throat> so rounded tops and bottoms are always uh, reversal patterns. So we've talked about a number of different kinds of classic chart patterns. We had a very quick uh, walkthrough of indicators and oscillators, and we talked about just two different kinds of short-term patterns. But what I wanted to tell you is the great thing is you don't have to spend time studying books and understanding all the ins and outs of these different technical events, because this is what Recognia can do automatically for you. <clears throat> all the different events that I'm showing on this chart, Recognia will find automatically for you. And it doesn't just find those events on one or two stocks. We scan the entire Australian market every night, and we will find any of these events that have occurred against any stock in the marketplace. So we do the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Now, one of the questions I'll often get when I'm speaking about classic patterns and so on is, you know, how well do these patterns actually work? You know, what's the, what's the effectiveness? And I think a really good reference for that is a study that was performed by a famous author, Martin Pring. Martin Pring is a very well-known technical analyst. He's written a number of books. But he actually worked with Recogni on a study of the effectiveness of classic chart patterns. And that study actually appeared as chapter 18 of his book, Martin Pring on Price Patterns. It's a great book, by the way, if you wanted to, uh, to pick it up. But in his study, basically, Martin looked at over 5,000 different classic patterns out of Recogni's database. And he looked at uh, just a, a small subset of those just to make the amount of data manageable. He looked at head and shoulders, double tops and double bottoms, and he basically studied a number of different sectors of the market, the financial, energy, transportation, and retail sectors between the years 1982 
and 2003. So the reason for that long, long historical period is you wanted to have many different primary bull and bear markets for each of these sectors. So the result of that was that he, well, I'll actually explain a little bit of the nomenclature first. We talked a bit about the pattern length when I was describing the head and shoulders pattern. So if we have a head and shoulders bottom like this one, well then the time from when we actually cross the neckline in the downward direction to the time we cross the neckline in the upward direction is called the pattern length. So if that's 50 days, then the time frame to actually achieve the target price is going to be roughly 50 days. We're going to call that L. If you wanted to wait longer to see where the price went, let's suppose you want to wait 2L, that would be 100 days. The other thing we want to look at is the percent of objective achieved. So again, we talked about measuring the height of the pattern, which is from the lowest point of the pattern to the neckline. And if we add that to the confirmation price, that can tell us the rough objective where we think the target price might be. Now, sometimes the price of a stock might go more than that. So some stocks might achieve 200% uh, of their objective in a longer period of time. So that's specifically what Martin was looking at in his study. So when he looked at bullish patterns taking place in cyclical bull markets, and if he looked at what happened after a time period of 1L, what he found was that these bullish patterns, 30% of them hit their target within 1L, and about 10% of them were much bigger winners. They're hitting double the target in, in, in 1L. Then he looked at, well, what happens if we can wait a little longer? And what if we're not impatient? Rather than waiting 1L, we can wait a longer period of time, call it 5L. So if you wait 5L, what he found was that in bullish markets, bull patterns 70% of the time achieve their target price within 5L, and 25% of those patterns were big winners. In other words, they, they were up 400% of the objective. So they, they actually did very, very well. Now, some of you might say, well, this is bull patterns and bull markets, so, you know, we kind of expect those to do well. So what if we look at bullish patterns in bearish markets? So here's an example of a, um, another head and shoulders, but this is a head and shoulders breakout in a primary bull market. So it's a bullish pattern, but in a primary bear market. What happens if we look at events like this? So when Martin looked at these kinds of events, what he found was they don't work quite as well as, as bullish patterns in bull markets, but that 55% were hitting their objective within 5L compared to 70% in bull markets. About 30% hit twice their objective, and about 15% hit four times the objective. So bullish patterns in bear markets still did quite well. Now, of course, he also looked at... Um, the effect of bearish patterns in both bull and bear markets. And if you want to see the results of that, you're going to have to buy his book. Um, but I'll tell you that the results were, were similar to what I'm showing you here. So we've talked a little bit about um, the kinds of technical events that may be useful to you in, in your trading. We've had a bit of a deeper dive on classic patterns. And we've talked about some of the effectiveness of classic patterns. So what I'd like to do now is segue from my PowerPoint presentation into a little bit of a demonstration. I'd like to show you some of these things at work using technical insight. So what I will do is open my browser and I'm going to go into the Bell Direct site. I'm going to show you first and foremost where you're going to find technical insight. Uh, just one second here. Um, so what I'm going to show you to begin with is under research and tools, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different things that are available, but one of them is technical insight down about the middle. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to actually go into Recognia's technical insight tool. So, the first thing I want to show you is how you can get some new technical trade ideas from Recognia based on the principles of technical analysis. So, as I mentioned to you, every day Recognia is going to scan the entire market and we're going to find technical events that are of interest. So, we scanned the markets last night and what we found was the five most bullish events on the Australian market were these five. So the number one most bullish event was uh, Lee 10 Holdings, which had a continuation wedge. And if I put my mouse on the chart, I actually get a little bit more information. It tells me this event took place on the 11th of April. It's an intermediate term bullish event. The last price was 2030. And based on this particular pattern, Recognia sees a target price of $24 to $24.90. The pattern duration is that L we talked about, so we see the pattern duration at 30 days. The next most bullish featured event is Ainsworth Game Technology, which had a symmetrical continuation triangle. 
AMCOR had an ascending continuation triangle, uh, Flexi Group had a continuation diamond, and so on. And of course, in any market, there are people who are bullish and people who are bearish. If you happen to feel that maybe the market's getting a little bit stretched at this point and that you're more comfortable with a bearish position, well, here are a number of bearish trade ideas, only four for today. But the most bearish event we found in the market was for Rio Tinto, where we had an exhaustion bar, which is a bearish uh, short-term pattern. I wanted to show you, if I'm interested in this long event for, um, for um, this was for Leeton Holdings, I can actually you know, click on that or go to this thing called Details. This takes me to another page in Technical Insight. What we find on this page is more information about that particular event. So again, this is a continuation wedge. And if we look at the actual price chart, this is the two-year price history for Leeton Holdings. Again, you can see there's a very steep run up here indicated by these gray trend lines. And in red, you'll see the pattern we found. Again, this is a wedge. When we talked about wedges always sloping downwards um, as opposed to a triangle. Where we broke out above the top trend line of the wedge, that confirmed this particular pattern and tells us that the target price is $24 to $24.90, up from the last price of $20.30. Now, this green rectangle is called the target price region. Uh, it's not on unless you turn it on. You have to actually select this little radio button here. But if you do that, what you'll see is this dark green at the top is the target price. This is $24 to $24.90. The width of this green rectangle tells us about how long we think it's going to take to reach the target price. This is very actionable. Here's what's happened. Um, here's what we think might happen next, and here's how long we think it might take to happen. Um, I also wanted to show you while I'm on this page um, a couple of other, other things that are available to you. So we can tell you about this particular event, but it might also be interesting to know things like support and resistance levels. So if we actually look at this price chart over the last, say, uh, 500 bars and say calculate support and resistance, what I can do is draw the support and resistance lines that Recogni finds on this chart. So here you can find that there's a point where uh, we had some resistance here and a bit of a resistance points here and then some support found here. Recogni's support and resistance algorithm is more um, sophisticated than many. Uh, so rather than just drawing a, a line through the price chart, you know, where it looks like you had a lot of touches or um, or approaches to a particular price level, we actually look at how many shares change hands at different levels and use that in our calculation of support and resistance. And of course, that can change over different time periods. So this is calculated over 500 bars, which is the whole length of the chart. But I could change that and look over 250 bars or days, which is the intermediate term view, 100 bars, and so on. So different ways you can actually look at this. What we can also do is help you with trailing stops. So let's suppose I was to take a long position in this particular stock. It might be a smart idea to have a stop in under my, uh, under my order, just to make sure that if you know, the pattern fails and it goes the other direction, that I've actually limited my, my downside. So trailing stops can be calculated two ways. We can calculate what's called a percentage trailing stop, which is the simple way. You can basically say, I want a trailing stop that's 8% you know, below the current price. And Recogni will calculate that, so it's $18.68. Or we also have a more sophisticated trailing stop algorithm called the Recognia trailing stop. And what this does is it calculates a stop level based on the historic volatility of the instrument. So we'll actually look at a long historical period and then tell you what's a safe level for your stop. It's not going to cause you to get stopped out by historic volatility. So 1895 is the value of the Recognia stop. And I can also show you that Recognia can also do something else for you. Let's suppose you wanted to evaluate, well, how well would this stop have worked out for me? So let's suppose I actually was lucky enough to buy into this stock somewhere back in this trough in December 2012. So that was my investment date. How would a Recognia uh, trailing stop with a medium stop level have worked out for me? Well, I can actually, oops, I can actually have that drawn on the chart for me, and let's just see how that would have worked out. So in purple here, you see this is my investment date with the upward purple triangle. And this purple line shows me where my stop level would have been using a Recognia medium trailing stop on each particular day. So in fact, what happened is right here on the 7th of March, I would have actually got stopped out. So just before we went into this decline, uh, my stop would have been hit and I would have got stopped out on that date. So stops are always a good idea to help you manage your risk. And I think you should experiment a little bit with these Recognia stops and think about whether they are useful to you in your trading. Let's just go back to the main landing page. 
And I wanted to show you another way that you can get some trade ideas from Recognia. We have also what are called the most viewed events. So whereas the featured events are what Recognia thinks are the most interesting events of the day, the most viewed events are what other users of technical insight happen to be researching. So in Australia, the most bullet, sorry, the most viewed technical event is this one, a continuation wedge on Fortescue Metals Group. Uh, second most viewed is M2 Telecommunications. It had an ascending continuation triangle and so on. So that's another way you can get some trade ideas by looking at most viewed events. Now let's suppose the trade idea I'm looking for is very specific. You know, I have something very specific in mind. We have something called the technical event screener. So you can use the screener in one of two ways. You can either um, use what are called preset searches. So you can say, show me highly traded bullish stocks, or show me stocks with a long-term bullish outlook, or show me stocks with a possible 15% increase. Um, or you can use it in what's called the advanced mode. So if there's something very specific I'm looking for, um, you know, show me stocks uh, that trade on the Australian Securities Exchange, and maybe only stocks in the metals and mining sector I'm interested in. I can also say I only want to see stocks that have a price of at least a dollar. And I want to look over the last, let's suppose, four weeks. Now, what kind of events do I want? Let's suppose I want bullish classic patterns or short-term patterns. That's an example of a search that I could do. So I can now say search, and the Recogni will dig into our historical database, and we'll bring up a list of trade ideas that match that set of criteria that you've given me. So here is a whole bunch of ideas that all have had bullish short-term or classic patterns occurring in the last four weeks and are for stocks trading on the ASX in the metals and mining industry. Now you can view these in a few different ways. This is called the standard view. There's also what's called the detailed view, so you get a lot more information about each particular event. Or we have what's called the chart view. So some people are very visually oriented, they just want to look at the charts. So if you want to look at a bunch of charts and pick out a trade idea from that, then you can view these trade ideas in the uh, charts view. Um, we'll go back to the standard view, and I wanted to also show you that um, you can also even buy and sell right from this page. So if you have been you know, looking for a particular kind of idea and you happen to find it here, by clicking buy or sell, you can actually get directed immediately to the Bell Direct equity order entry page. Now another use case for technical insight is to validate an idea you already have. So maybe you've been following a certain stock and you read a news story in the newspaper today about it, and you, you want to just find out more. Is today the right day to buy? So let's suppose I have a trade idea, and I want to just see what are the te what's technical analysis telling me about this particular stock today. So this is called Acrux, which is in the management and diversified services sector. This is everything that Technical Insight knows about this particular stock. So here's a two-year price history, and you can see these red squares here are dates that we had bearish technical events, and these green dots indicate dates that we had bullish events. So we can customize this by different time frames, either short term, intermediate term, or long term, where the summary view is the aggregation of all those. Um, on the side here, you'll see we're, we get, we're telling you we had seven bullish and six bearish events in the summary view. Here's where we found support and resistance. Here's where we're suggesting your stops might be. And when we look back here, we have a, a historical listing of all the technical events that are active for this particular stock. So you can see there's been a number of them. Um, but there's quite a period here of bullishness for a number of weeks. And in fact, prior to that, there was a triple bottom, one of those classic patterns we talked about. So if I wanted to find out more about this triple bottom, I could select that. And you can see here's an interesting example. We had a long decline in the price of this particular stock. There's the triple bottom that we talked about. Here's the neckline, that, that level of resistance to the price of the stock. Here's the target price region. And we actually had a target price for this particular stock of 342 to 350. The confirmation price when we detected this event was 312. So in fact, this particular stock did go on to rally quite significantly and probably hit about twice its target price within the, um, the target price region. Let's just pick one more just as an example. Um, <clears throat> so let me go back to uh, technical event lookup. And I'm going to look at another stock, MSB. Must be as mesoblast. So again, this stock has had a you know bit of a sideways ride, but again, recently lots and lots of bullish and bearish events. And if we look at the historical listing, you can see that um, it's been 
it's been a bit sideways, but there's been some some significant both significant periods of both bullishness and bearishness. I want to look at this event that took place on January the 11th, which was a bottom triangle. So I mentioned that triangles are one of the events that technical traders tend to trade the most. So again, we've had a long decline for many, many months going into this. This is a reversal pattern, a bottom triangle. So we actually did break out above the top of the triangle, confirming this event. The date that on the date that the pattern was confirmed, the stock was trading at 574. And we actually saw a target price on that date of 7.30 to 7.70. That's this dark green region up here. And you actually see we did achieve the target price in roughly half of the event duration. So this one actually worked out very well for you. So my time is quickly running out, but I wanted to show you just a couple more things very quickly. I wanted to talk about alerts. And alerts are a very powerful tool in technical insight. So many of the things that I've showed you so far can be automated via alerts. So what I can do is I can say, I want to be notified of new trade ideas. So I can, for example, set up an alert which will send me trade ideas that are interesting to me. So I want to know about um, uh, different kinds of patterns occurring in the oil and gas industry, for example. I can actually specify that, and I can say that I only want to see stocks that are priced between $1 and $100 and have a minimum volume of uh, 100,000 shares a day traded. And I want to look at only bullish indicators and oscillators, for example. That might be an example of a technical, uh, technical alert that I could set up for myself. So every day, Recogni will scan the markets, and we will find trade ideas that conform to the criteria of this alert, and we will email them to you. So they'll be in your email inbox prior to the start of the trading day. Another popular kind of alert is the watch list alert. Let's suppose you own... 10 different stocks in your portfolio and you want to stay on top of those 10 stocks and understand what are the technical events that are driving the price action in these stocks. You can actually create a watch list to actually keep those in mind. So for example, I can type in a list here of a number of different stocks. I can use LEI, ECR, MSB, maybe Qantas I'll put in as well. Oops, sorry, I have to... LEI, uh, MSB, Qantas, and so on. And then I can actually say next, and that will actually create for me a watch list alert for those stocks. So watch lists are, and uh, alerts are very, very powerful. Last, I'll mention to you that there's significant built-in education as part of technical insight. So we talked a bit about classic patterns today. If you wanted to learn more about the classic patterns, you know, there's all kinds of educational content. So if you want to know more about a bottom triangle, for example, you can just click on bottom triangle, and here's a lot more information for you to absorb. So it tells you a little bit about the implication of a bottom triangle, what it looks like, what are the important characteristics, how do you trade it, what are the criteria that support, the criteria that refute, and so on. So lots and lots of educational content, and not just for classic patterns, but for all the different types of technical events that are covered in Recogni's product, including the short-term indicators, uh, short-term patterns, indicators, and oscillators. And if you forget everything else that we talked about in this webinar today, I want you to remember this help button. So at the top of every page is a button called help. On that page, you can get access to a getting started guide that walks you through some of the key functionality of technical insight. There are also some tutorial videos you can watch to understand some of the major use cases of the product. There's some frequently asked questions, and if you've got a real stumper, you can actually go to this link and access the Recognia support forum, and you can actually ask your question and have it answered by a Recognia expert within 24 hours. So that is a very quick summary of technical insight, and I hope that's been useful to you. And at this point, I'm going to turn the webinar back to Michael and see if there are any questions that we can answer for you. Great. Thanks very much for that presentation, Peter. It was very, very insightful. Um, we'll just start going through some of the questions now. There's, there's quite a few, so we'll get through as many as we can. Um, we've got one question. Someone saying, when I do technical analysis, I notice that some stocks don't have a target range. Why is that? So the reason for that is because we only get a target price for certain kinds of events. So the classic patterns that I focused on in this presentation, we always get a target price and a, and a trading horizon for those particular events. 
Other events like short-term patterns or indicators and oscillators, they don't provide us with a target price. That's just nothing to do with Recogni. That's just the way technical analysis works. So if you're seeing a target price, it means it's because it's for a classic pattern. Okay, great. Um, we've got another question. I might take this one. Um, is there any chance that the webinar will be recorded for future review? Um, yep. Yeah, so this webinar is being recorded as well as the one we hosted last Friday. So we'll hopefully get that up on our website shortly, and we'll be sending you all an email with the link to the to the recording. Um, and another question similar to that note, could we get copies of the slides as reminders? Um, if you do want the slides, I, I can email them to you. Is, is that all right, Peter, if, if I send them over? That's completely fine. Great. Um, so yeah, if, if you just send me an email, um, my email address I think is actually on the screen at the moment, um, michael.stocks at thirdpartyplatform.com.au. Um, so it's sort of on the screen in that gray font. If you just send me an email just um, requesting the slides, I can, yeah, I'll just personally send you a copy. That's fine. All right, another, another question for you, Peter. How can I use volume as an added confirmation of a trend? That's a great question. So we talked very briefly about this as part of the PowerPoint, but it's always good to look for confirmation of a breakout of any pattern using volume as a criteria. So if you're looking for um, a reversal pattern to you know, indicate a shift in sentiment from a bearish one to a bullish one, then you want to see that confirmed on volume. So if you have a, a, you know, a pattern like a, um, a hammer, but very, very weak volume on the day of that hammer, that kind of draws into question how much, uh, how much participation in this change of sentiment there really is. So looking at volume as a confirmation criteria for all these patterns is very, very useful. So absolutely good point that we should always be looking at volume as part of our technical trading. Okay, great. And the last question that we've got is um, to do with the, what is the Columbine Capital Quant rating um, when you're looking through the technical event screen? What does that represent? Yeah, thank you. I, I didn't have time to cover that, but what I'll mention this is, to so find this several places um, inside Technical Insight. So Technical Insight focuses on on technical events, but we also provide you as, as part of the value of the product with some quantitative rankings you can use as well. So for those of you who are not familiar with the idea of quantitative rankings, um, there are companies out there that have built m mathematical models that rank stocks based on you know, proprietary analysis. What they'll do is they'll look at all different kinds of data that's available for that stock, some of it being fundamental, some of it being price data, some of it being momentum data, some of it being earnings estimates, and they'll use that information to rank stocks. So we happen to license some, um, some ranking data from a company called Columbine Capital. They're an American company based in Colorado Springs. They're one of the granddaddies of this space. They've been at it for about 30 years, and they're consistently ranked among the top of the quantitative ratings agencies. Um, they're actually ranked number one in, uh, in the world in, in 2011 by Jaywalk Research. So what Columbine does is they take all the stocks in Australia, they put them through their models, and they'll actually rank them from 1 to 10. So what it means is if a stock is ranked number 1, it means that that stock is ranked in the top 10% of stocks in the market. A stock that is ranked um, 10 is in the lowest decile of the, uh, the performance. So let's suppose we are looking for um, bullish trade ideas. We might choose to only consider stocks that were ranked between one and five, in other words, the top half of the market, as part of our screening criteria. This kind of puts the wind at your back. You're basically looking for you know, bullish technical events, but the universe you're con going to consider is only stocks that have um, a, a ranking in the top half of all stocks based on Columbine's ranking methodology. Um, incidentally, there's another product available to you from Bell Direct called Strategy Builder and you will be able to also leverage Columbine Capital quant rankings as part of your strategies in Strategy Builder. And if any of you are interested in you know, how good are these rankings, you can very easily build yourself a strategy in Strategy Builder and then try putting on the Columbine Capital quant rankings and taking them off and just seeing what the difference is. And uh, I've found for myself they've been very, very effective at actually improving the performance of my strategies um, by focusing on uh, just those stocks that have um, bullish or bearish uh, quantitative rankings. Great question, though. Okay, I think that's all we've got time for. So thanks very much for, for joining uh, 
me and Peter this morning for the, for the webinar. And as I said, we'll be posting a, a recording of it later on so you can review it. Yeah, have, a, have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Peter.